Hey, it's Bill in Virginia, and uh, this is the start of part three of the backdrop build. I have it uh, taken back off of the uh, end scale layout, laid out over here on the workbench. I have a variety of modeling materials uh, set up so that uh, I can access as I'm starting to do this work. I've got a variety of trees, acrylic paints, uh, scenic materials, different stuff that I've used on the layout. Uh, you'll notice that over here I've added uh, quarter inch strips in and along this area and then another one over there. That's where the blacktop crosses. Right in here is where the gravel road crosses from the Purina Mills and then in here is the stream valley. So what I need to do is make sure that I don't have the gap between the scenery and the uh, backdrop in this area. The rest of this I can cover that quarter inch gap that this creates by using vegetation. That's not a problem. That line is going to disappear but I need to do so that it is uh, really a razor thin line in these areas just to kind of blend it in well. So what I'm going to start in is I'm going to start doing some painting. I'm going to add a little bit of mountain into the backdrop in this area here. And I did take pictures so that I can visualize as I'm working. You know, I'm working on this horizontal I want to be visualizing that it's in a vertical plane and then having the pictures here so that I can see what it looks like face on is going to be beneficial because otherwise I turn around and I see this. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start adding just some hints of uh, a continuation of this hill into the background. Be doing it right into here and it's only going to be a few streaks running through. Uh, the rest of the lower area is going to get a darker green and uh, a mix. And I've got some other colors in here just to make it look like ground cover because all of this is going to be foliage and vegetation. But as I'm planting real trees in this one inch foam board, uh, you know, I want them to be where you can look back and you can see some of the, the rock color poking through like you can in some of this area. And then when I get over into other areas, I'm going to make a low ridge. I'm not going to make a high ridge because, again, in distance, you know, as you're looking, you're seeing things go down. You know, the farther away you are, the lower it is. Even as you get closer, it becomes a huge ridge. From a distance, it's not very high. So I'm only going to be going up, you know, maybe about this high to have a similar ridge as like what I've got here. That's just going to make it where it blends in better and it's easier to do things. I'm still waiting on some backdrops because I will put a couple of uh, industries that'll be kind of buried in some of the trees here. You know, I'll be doing a variety of techniques to try to force, force perspective, uh, make it look deeper than it is. But anyway, I'm going to start over here. So uh, the next segment should show me uh, moving along a little bit anyway. Not going to be doing a whole terrible lot here over a few days. I've got a dentist appointment tomorrow and I'm getting a tooth yanked. So um, this video will actually stretch out over a few days period of time, I'm thinking. All right. The uh, background painting piece is pretty much done. I'm going to do a little bit more with maybe some clouds in the sky. And I've still got to do more up around Alta. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back in place since there's no uh, paint that can touch the layout, and just kind of get a look at it, see how it looks uh, with it being vertical, uh, see if I need to do any modifications. But, uh, you know, you can come up, you can see in the background, you can see some of the rocks still coming through, outlines of the trees. This is going to be the uh, river valley here. Uh, the next ridge over on the side, and again, uh, some trees uh, popping through. A uh, little road going to be going off, uh, so let's put her in place and uh, let's see how it looks. Well, I've got the uh, backdrop back in place and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the results so far. Still got uh, the three-dimensional piece to go, but I think it's capturing the flavor of what I'm interested in doing here. Once I get the, uh, you know, trees in on that one inch filler piece. I'm going to have all of the paint is going to be in the background. 
there's going to be some trees kind of hiding some of the lower stuff there. Uh, but again, you're going to have some visibility behind it. Uh, you know, I've got to put the road in. You can see that little piece of pink foam that I added as filler. Same thing down here by the stream. Uh, just to kind of make it so it can go over. And then I'll do additional painting once I get some stuff in over that way to kind of fill in that. But, yeah, right now this is not too bad. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with the result. Uh, I might end up doing a uh, part four for uh, this particular video series. Uh, the next piece, of actually the three-dimensional detailing, it's going to take a lot longer. The uh, painting that I just did, that's, that's 30 minutes worth of work. Um, just slap the paint on and uh, using uh, the mind's eye for where I wanted it to be. Got it to this far, so uh, we'll see here. I'm going to do a little bit more, uh, run some trains, and we'll see, uh, we'll see what we can get. So I've got the uh, backdrop off of the layout again, and I'm about ready to start on the next step, to start giving that a little bit more of a 3D uh, depth feel to it. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to use polyfiber, and you can see I've already got it sort of roughly uh, torn and just setting on uh, that one-inch foam piece for the backdrop. This is going to mirror the uh, top of the ridge and coming down to uh, just about the, uh, the stream level. And I'm going to do on uh, this like I did over here in that in areas I've got some of that uh, polyfiber. It's on the other side, but it's going to be the same technique. I'm going to use dilute white glue on top of the polyfiber, let it set in, and then I'm going to build it up in layers to give me a, a brush look. I'm going to use full strength glue to uh, glue it down. I'm also going to use some of these little uh, little nails with uh, just the heads, just to kind of press it in and uh, keep it in place while the glue sets. Because then when I put the ground cover on top, it's going to hide the nails. This is not going to look anything like polyfiber. I'll also be able then to plant trees in and along this, uh, you know, even after it dries. But, you know, of course, you know me, I'm going to be impatient. I'm going to do it pretty quick as soon as I can get some trees ready. But I'm going to take care of this piece first. Notice I've got it hanging over quite a bit. That's so that, uh, you know, I've got more than a quarter inch gap along some of this so that fiber can go in and press up against the scenery, make a, you know, a fairly nice seam so that from the other side as you're looking at it, you're not going to really see it. So uh, another video clip coming after I get this a little bit farther along. Making progress. So I do have it glued in place for the uh, fiber. I do have... Uh, yeah, 50-50 white glue running down the side, which is fine. But uh, I've already got, uh, you know, the top coat put on the, uh, the fiber here. Kind of add that fullness and thickness. I will clean that mess up. I'm also, you know, put paper towels down underneath, not to uh, collect glue, but to be able to uh, get... Uh, my excess uh, scenic materials because I can reuse all that on other parts. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start planting some trees in this uh, slope as long as the glue continues to flow. But uh, fiber was glued down with 100% strength uh, white glue tacked in place using a bunch of little, uh, little nails. Uh, obviously white glue is applied liberally to the surface of the polyfiber and then multiple layers of scenic material have been added you know that's a lot of different uh, grades of from coarse ground foam to medium to fine to uh, ground cover uh, you can still see the glue uh, it's going to be wet for quite a while but uh, i will get the trees in that way the trees will also help hold everything in place and then uh, this part of it uh, once i get this all done and it dries a little bit Put it up against the layout and uh, see how that looks. All right, trees are in on this little piece here. 
So glue, obviously still wet. Uh, it's only been about a half an hour since the last video segment. So I'm going to let this dry for <laughs> a while. And a while for me is maybe an hour. Uh, but give it a chance. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to use a bunch of the material that uh, you know I saved uh, as I was putting it on. I'm going to come in and I'm going to lay this down on its back and I'm going to fill in on some of the areas in between the trees. So you can see I've got kind of shapes in there. I'm going to come back in with a reasonably fine paintbrush and I'm going to paint in white glue in certain areas. Uh, again, this is going to be laying on its back. You'll see what I'm going to do here in a little bit. And then I'm going to use on that white glue, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to sprinkle some of this material on it so that I get a bit of a three-dimensional effect on trees that are in the foreground, but still behind the truly three-dimensional trees. Uh, we'll see how that looks. And then uh, that'll probably be the end of this video. I still don't have my flats. I've still got work to do on that side, but... Uh, I'll run some trains and we'll see how this looks after I get this next piece done. And that should be, uh, that should be it for this one. Then uh, on to uh, number four in the series. This is actually kind of fun and it's still light. This, this thing is easy to move, so I'm real happy with the results so far. Well, I have it now laying down on its uh, back and I have painted some white glue in. It's a little bit hard to see just from this angle. Uh, but you can kind of see how it gives some texture behind the uh, fully three-dimensional trees. Uh, I've uh, not painted in the background. The, back, the far background is just like that far back. Uh, up close, I've uh, added a variety of ground cover to uh, bring it out a little bit. Now I'm going to let this dry for a little while, and then I will set it back up and... Um, some of that ground cover is going to fall. It's going to fall into the uh, the brush that's at the base and perfectly fine. That's going to add some more color to it. But it should uh, highlight a little bit of more texture, a little more branch-like appearance in some of this anyway. So uh, we'll let that dry for a little bit and put it on the uh, layout and uh, see how it looks and run some trains. Well, here it is. Let it dry a little longer and uh, put it on the layout and uh, we'll see how this thing looks. But uh, I've got the painting in the background. You can still see that coming through in different areas. I've got texture added to make it look like I've got trees going up and disappearing into the back. Um, I'm satisfied. So uh, let's give her a whirl and see what it looks like with some trains running by it. So I put the backdrop back on. Uh, this end you can see is just the painting piece. Then as I pan around, see the stream in the background there. And then we pick up where I've started to do the three-dimensional, add some depth to it. I like how that looks. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's, uh, I'm just going to let it sit there and just... Now I'm going to really let it dry. It's dried enough, but you can still see a little bit of the kind of the milky color. It's still a little bit of glue. So I'm just going to let it sit and uh, let it do its thing. But uh, let's run some trains uh, over by that direction, see how it looks.